G'day guys, in today's video I've got an old Acer E5574 with the model number E5574G-54M8 and this particular laptop has got is getting opened up for some new thermal paste and a SSD upgrade so to begin with I'm going to take out all the Phillips head screws which on this older model I believe nearly all of them will be the same now this one was originally released in April 2016 it's running an i7-6500U and I think a GT720, so a NVIDIA GT720, which isn't thrilling nowadays, but it's still very, very basic, but it will do the job just fine. Granted, you probably not want to play Fortnite on high graphics, but you may get away with low at 720. Can't, I can't say I've actually used one of these in a long time. I mean, the last one I used was a GT620 and a GT630, which at that point in time, I think I was playing Counter-Strike Source, so a little while ago now. This one's an all-white one, which I'm surprised hasn't actually completely stained yellow, which, come by the edge of the machine, it does quite surprise me that it isn't yellow. There we go, we have a couple more screws hidden under here. Back when drives had DVD ROMs. Take this out. Now, not too sure how to approach opening this. I'm just going to grab here. Yep, that's lifting. And if you use something like a business card, I'm going to use a practice uh, plastic pry tool. Get me in there, like that. So now from here, should almost be able to pull it up by hand. I'm kind of pulling it that way, up and to the back. I still have one more screw hidden in there. We get this screw out of here as well. There we go. Now we can leave. So I've kind of slid it up and across to avoid all these ports here. So don't try and pull it up from this corner. This corner. Start on the other end and work your way to it. Now I do believe the speakers are attached. I could feel a cord there. Fold this over. And we have speakers connected down here. So don't just yank the cover off. Put this out. There we go. Now look at all this room. Well, all this room. <laughs> so to begin with, we'll disconnect the battery, which almost looks like it could be replaced with just cells. One, two, three, four cells in there. To disconnect that, we should just be able to put our fingers here on each of those points and get a fingernail and pull it backwards. There we go. Bingo. Here we can see the VRAM for the graphics chip. Or at least I'm pretty confident being it's got SK Hynix written on there. And looking around, we have the Wi Fi card here, which would be upgradable. We have the old and slow hard drive right here which I am going to replace that with a WD Blue. Find them decent value for money for what they do. This wiggles back. And this particular one was an old one terabyte drive. Also WD Blue. So we're going to halve the overall capacity, or quarter the capacity. But we're going to get a hell of a lot more speed out of this machine. Being that this one is only using about 40 gig of data with a fresh install of Windows, it's going to be considerably better and a much more usable machine. If we have a look in the back here as well. We have a build date of January 2016. We have a build date of December 2021. Or 2021, yes. So quite a few years newer in technology and considerably younger. There we go. So that there. All I did was line up these pins here, push it forward, in, push this bit down, done. 
can over here we do also have a daughter board for a USB 2, I would believe that would be. This one here looks to be the battery reset button. And over here we have our RAM. So to get the RAM out of here, we pull these tabs out and to the right, or away from it. And we flip up, we fold it over, and we have 8 gig DDR3. I move this sticker, tell us a bit more. Well, essentially DDR3. Now when we go to put that back in, we put it on a 45 degree angle and pull down, and that locks it into position. And see how there's this little notch here? Well, putting the RAM in wrong isn't going to work. We're going to put it in the right way so that matches up. So I'm looking right here. So that kind of slots in on a 45 degree angle. And then you pull it down, click. Same with this one. Pull them out, flips up. Right now it's got 16 gig of RAM. There's really no point changing that, that's plenty. Now looking at the main event here, thermal paste. So looking here we have, we want to unscrew the fan as well. So one Phillips head screw, two Phillips head screw. pulls back and out and we lift up and out and this one's actually from a relatively dust free environment as we can see here so must have been relatively well kept we do have a bit of just dust settled on the fan itself that's perfectly normal perfectly fine now from here we undo one screw two screw now this was on or turned on probably about 20 minutes ago, so hopefully there's enough heat in here that this thermal paste isn't super stuck, which may be an issue on some of the older machines. Well, if I just give it a slight wiggle before I lift it up, there we go. And as we can see here, we've got thermal paste that's been on here, which is looking quite average. And funnily enough, look at the thermal paste dumped on here. I'd say this may have been replaced once upon a time. Looking at where the thermal paste actually goes, the iGPU is a thermal pad. <laughs> so that would be the integrated graphics on here, which isn't actually getting contact via copper. Which seems like if this was moved down just slightly, it would have actually hit it. So it's like they've welded this on or soldered this on in the wrong position. If they moved it down to here, this would have covered the chip and and the integrated. That feels... Eh, still feels damp, feels, feels, still feels tacky. I'm not sure whether or not I will replace that or not. I'll have a look at my thermal paste and find out. Or in my collection of thermal pads. Now to begin with I'll give this a clean with some isopropyl alcohol. Which... Some of this. A cloth, also known as toilet paper. Don't bother with tissue paper, keep a roll of toilet paper on the bench, it's more convenient. The sheets are smaller, and it doesn't take up a whole section of, ta of bench space, which definitely sucks. And this thermal paste, yeah, the CPU thermal paste is fairly tacky. I think they might have been a bit too cautious with the thermal paste on the GPU. Good. Next up, clear the thermal paste off here. Which that one there on the GPU is relatively dry. Okay. Looking all right. I'm just going to give this, not even, I won't even give this a, a dust blowout, I'll just give it a brush and that should be fine. So the thermal pad that I've got is a bit too chunky. The, uh, that one's too chunky. Where was the other one I found? 
Bingo. So this one will compact down. So I'm just going to put that on there. And then put some thermal paste on. So I'll chop that down to size. it a little bit and where's some thermal paste I mean this doesn't really require much at all compared to modern or desktop CPUs and GPUs my only concern I've got now is with that thermal pad being so big whether or not it is doing adequate cooling or the rest of the copper will push down enough on there let's have a take this one off now and let's put that cooler back on. Yeah, so we are compacting. I have to take that off now just to see. So probably a bit too big. The issue that I got there is that wasn't a nice spread. So a one millimeter pad that I've got. My next dilemma here is whether or not it makes enough contact with the pad. Get that out of the way. Too big, but what the hell? There we go. And if we put this back down, and remember to remove the old pad or the, the first replacement pad. So I can see they're compressing. Right now, that's looking a bit better. A bit better spread. Excellent. Right now I'm happy with that, so I'm going to put those screws back in. One, two, three, four, and five. Go. I thought there was an extra screw laying around. Next up, we need to reinstall the fan, loosely sit in its connection, and then have this cable parallel and then slide it in. So, right now it's loosely sitting. I'll just push it. It's now in. And Phillips head screw in. Other Phillips head screw in. Also, while it's sitting in this position, with most laptops nowadays, the hinges become very loose over time. So typically while they're open, I usually just try and tighten up the hinge a little bit. Or tighten up the mounting point of the hinge, I should say. Go. Okay. Also, if you do damage your charging port, which is here, you are, you are able just to buy a cable to replace that, which connects up to here. So that is another thing that is repairable on this older laptop. Now, if we zoom out a bit further, I don't believe there's really much more to do. From here, we got reconnect the battery, which is very similar to the cable over here. We loosely sit it in its position, just so it can't really rock around. And once it's like sitting there and it seems relatively locked in, you should just be able to then pull it forward toward you. And that should lock it back in, so that battery is now reconnected once more. Next up from here, lastly, is the Connecting up the speakers. I was losing my plot for a second there. Yeah, right now it is complaining. I don't know why it's doing that, but anyway. I have not told it to turn on. Next up I'll line up these cables here. Yeah, I'm not 
too sure which direction is up for that. There we go. Yep. Loosely connected and pulled in, and now we're locked into position from there. Next up is the bottom cover. So you need to slide over this side to lock it into position. So right now that's connected. And then push down. There we go, should click into position, like so. There we go, with that all connected up. Next up from here, put your three round screws or flat screws back under the DVD drive, over here. One, two, and three. And then from there, we put our DVD drive back in once more. That slides in. And from there, you need to put back all your Phillips head scru screws. So there's no real hidden screws on this one. They're all fairly visible. I'm gonna power this up now and have a quick look at it, make sure everything's okay. And then from there, I'm just gonna put all these screws back in. I hope that helps. And that's how a bit of a teardown on an Acer Aspire E5 574. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.